Today in the news, you might want to upgrade before the new year, CPU prices are staying low, and PCI SIG says that it's not their fault if cables are melting. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Well folks, we got some possible bad news here. It looks like GPU prices might go up. I know it's hard to say with a straight face given the price of the RTX 4000 series and the RX 7000 series of GPUs, but this will also apply to the last couple of generations of GPUs that are still selling. That's because back in the Trump era, GPUs were subject to tariffs. So there were extra import duties for, and I quote, printed circuit assemblies constituting unfinished logic boards and GPUs were part of it. What this meant was a 25% tax. Pretty bad. In late 2021 though, after a lot of pushback from companies like Nvidia, HP, Zotac, and others, the Biden administration gave a tariff exemption on GPUs and other things that fell into a specific category. Great! The problem? Well, those tariff exemptions don't last forever, and this specific one is going to expire on December 31st of 2022. With the insane price of new tech, I mean, this tariff exemption expiring is not good. Honestly, I'm a little bit glad that we got the new stuff this year because last gen prices have gone way down, at least for AMD's lineup. If you weren't able to get a GPU during Black Friday, maybe you can wait until Boxing Day or another holiday sale, but if those tariffs do expire without renewal, it won't take long before the stock in your country runs out and you're hit with a massive price hike. Moving on to CPU prices, it looks like AMD might have misled us a little bit. So when the price of the Ryzen 7000 series dropped, AMD told PC Games Hardware that these discounts were for Black Week only, so temporary discount. But hey, Black Week passed, and guess what? The prices are still discounted. Plus, they have brand new packaging, so if you were looking to buy into the next generation of AMD CPUs, well, you might want to do so right now, since the price might not last past January 1st. Going back to some GPU news, PCI SIG just gave an update on the whole melting 16-pin connector situation. Essentially, they're saying that, well, it's not their fault and that it should be up to the board partners to test their own cables and adapters. Oof. They also added that uh, AIVs need to take all appropriate and prudent measures to ensure end user safety. Honestly, I'm not quite sure what. PCI SIG wants here. I mean, the best I can see AIBs do is have a huge warning label when you open the box saying, I don't know, please insert 12VH power connector fully into the socket with maybe a picture like this. Or, I mean, they could maybe revert back to three times eight pin connectors for future GPUs. Who knows, time and a lawsuit will tell, I guess. Let's do our weekly recap to see how many things have burnt down so far. Oh, no new cases since mid-November, pretty impressive. Speaking of melting connectors, we got what it's attached to, the RTX 4090. Now, we knew that this GPU had been pushed to its limits by Nvidia. I mean, you can't say that a 450 watt TDP is an efficient use of its GPU power. But what I didn't know is how insanely efficient it is at lower wattages. Quasar Zone, a Korean outlet, did some testing to see how low you can go on uh, power and how much performance you would lose. So they tested five games and averaged out the FPS and power consumption. Turns out that by reducing power down to almost half from its TDP, so that's 232 watts, the GPU only lost 8% of its total performance. That's crazy. Now, it's important to note that this comparison is to the TDP of the GPU. In actuality, the GPU in these games was only consuming about 350 watts average. But still, that's 120 watts lower or a 33% decrease in power for a loss of only 8% in performance. I'm actually pretty pumped to see how AMD GPUs will fare when it comes to under Revolting. Moving on, if you want to revisit Portal in full RT mode, you will be able to very soon. The demo that Nvidia showed back when they announced the RTX 4000 series of GPUs will be available in a week on December 8th. The best part? It's free. 
as long as you own the original Portal, of course. This is a DLC to the original game, after all. If you plan on playing, though, know that it is a pretty demanding DLC. On the Steam page, we can see that the minimum requirements is an RTX 3060. That's minimum. If we look at the recommended one, we're talking about an RTX 3080. And of course, for the ultra settings, you'd need at least an RTX 4080. That last one, though, has pretty much everything to do with their frame generation technology. AMD GPUs should still work with that DLC, since all Nvidia said you would need is a GPU that can handle Vulkan or DirectX 12, and of course, ray tracing within those APIs. Oh, and Intel GPUs should work too. I just keep forgetting about them, though work is a big word right now for Intel. I'm definitely going to check it out, but I have an RTX 2080, so I don't know how this will go. Let me know if you guys are going to try it out down below. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, it's right here. This is the latest video right here. Subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.